Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Skylar Earl. I'm chairing the session this afternoon. Uh, thank you all very much for coming. I hope you've had your coffee. We're going to have a very exciting afternoon. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give you uh, Nikolai Yanakiev. Just a second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so my talk's going to be about data science with OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. Um, just for a quick show of hands, who has worked with Wikidata or have heard of it? Okay. Um, so first of all, the outline. So what, gonna, what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, I'm going to introduce OpenStreetMap and Wikidata to you as a data source for data analysis. I'll show you how, what the differences are between those two projects and how you can connect the, the both projects together, and the uh, second part will be the whole data science part. Um, I, will, I won't have any AI or blockchain or these kinds of things. It will be like classical data science, and I'll uh, show you the libraries and tools I used, and um, there will be like an exhibition of the projects I, I tried to do with them. Um, so let's get started. Um, all of you probably know, uh, or most of you know, the, the the elements in OpenStreetMap. So you have three types of elements in OpenStreetMaps. You also have area, but it's also part of these uh, ways or relation. So a node is like a GPS point in OpenStreetMap. A way is like a collection of nodes um, collected as a line string. And then you have relation, which can be a collection of nodes or a collection of line strings and so on. And also relations of relations and so on. And uh, each of these elements can have their own metadata, and this is usually uh, stored as a key value pair. So for example, you have the key amenity, which is pretty common, um, where you have then values like bar, uh, barbecue, beer garden, and restaurant, and so on. And um, if we have a look at these data in, um, in an example, so Salzburg, my, my home city, you can see the, the, the various key value pairs that you have. So you have name, you have um, admin level and so on. And right in the, on the bottom there, you, you'll see uh, a, a, bit, a little bit slow, uh, small, you can see Wikidata with this weird number and a queue before of it. So wh what is Wikidata? So Wikidata is basically a knowledge graph. So that means that, um, uh, so it, the Wikidata is basically a project from Wikipedia and their idea was mainly to get all the info boxes and, and structure the, the data from the info boxes in such a way that uh, when something gets updated, like a mayor of a city, um, all of the other articles in other languages get updated too. And as a side project, they wanted to build the biggest knowledge graph in the world. So, and there you have like all this different kind of connections. And for example, for this Wikida uh, Wikipedia website, you have uh, for Douglas Adams, you will see in the bottom there a Wikidata item. So that looks like that. You have like this item with the um, ID we saw before. And each of these items is structured in, in such a way that you have statements um, which, show po which, which, uh, which are basically properties pointing to some other entity or some other item. And here you can see that uh, Douglas Adams was educated at uh, St. John's College. And um, St. John's College is again a Wikidata item. And, Wik Saint John, uh, and so you can have these connections going through all of these areas and you can ask very interesting questions with that. But how do you ask questions in Wikidata? So they have their own, uh, in, in, in linked data, in knowledge graphs, you usually use the Sparkle query language, which is a bit like SQL. Um, and they uh, Wikidata offers their own query service, a bit like Overpass Turbo for OpenStreetMap. And here you can ask uh, these queries, and here's an example for um, all the cats in, in, Wikida uh, in Wikidata. And here on the, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and on the area below you have this uh, table of, of what, you get, what you get back. Um, so one question I wanted to ask was, okay, what are all the windmills in, in uh, Wikidata, um, the query looks like that. So you have this select statement, which you saw before, and then you, you have these items and their label, and, um, okay, let's, let's try with the pointer. Oh, there it is. Okay, so you have like an item, and you, you wanna have the property instance of uh, a windmill. And then you can have optional uh, items where you wanna have the image, you wanna have the location, you wanna have the country, and this, uh, cryptic part below is so you get the labels from the items uh, back. 
and surprisingly most of the windmills are, are located in the Netherlands and uh, you can this this screenshot is also from the query service we saw before and you can uh, directly visualize the, the data uh, as a map or as a table or as a bar chart and everything else and you can click on the points and see the data we collected before like the country and the, uh, the name of the the windmill and so on uh, and okay I talked about both projects but how are they connected and how can we connect them so uh, sorry this is the wrong slide uh, <laughs> uh, just a quick uh, overview the, n the numbers so OpenStreetMap started 2004 and has a bunch of data like 5 million use um, over 5 million users 7 billion GPS points and so on and Wikidata is a more, much more recent project has only 20,000 users, active users. Uh, this distinction is because uh, when you work with Wikidata, you use the same uh, login as you would use for Wikipedia. So actually, there would be a lot more, So, but this is only the active part of them. And also the other part is, when you notice the, the number of items there, it's a quite big number for a fairly recent project. This is because Wikidata um, is, first of all, a, a public domain. So they believe facts are uh, public domain. And the other part is that they, inf they support uh, bots and people that do automatic uh, inserts. So that's um, one difference. And I, I, wa I want to talk about the, the connection between those two. So as we saw before, uh, we have in OpenStreetMap this Wikidata item, uh, Wikidata tag. And this is stable because the uh, Wikidata ID, even if it gets merged with another item or, or um, gets deleted, uh, not when it's got deleted, but when it's get merged with another item, you get a redirect. So the tag is actually stable. So it stays the same. Um, it's other ways in, in OpenStreetMap. So in OpenStreetMap, when you have in Wikidata the so-called OSM relation ID, uh, which has an o in total almost 100,000 entities, um, then you, you know as in an OpenStreetMap the IDs can change. So if you use a node, it can become a way, it can become a relation, and even relations can become other things. And so it's actually not so stable. And uh, especially, I was, uh, especially it's important that you don't use nodes or ways or areas in this, in this field. Um, there has been a proposal for a permanent ID in, in Wikidata, um, but it's still on the way to be developed. And another thing which is interesting is uh, you have some another tag in, in Wikidata where you, um, uh, where you can map the t key values we saw before with a property in Wikidata, which means you can uh, do matching and things like that. Okay, let's, let's go with the data science. Um, I, I saw this really interesting paper about data science which was called 50 Years of Data Science. And this actually explains why there is a need for data science and why sh it shouldn't be called uh, statistics. Um, it's a pretty long read, but it's fairly interesting. But the main difference is that statistic is usually um, focused on theory and inferential statistics, which means like pattern, uh, finding pattern in small sample sets. And data science is more uh, directed towards prediction and pattern recognition for uh, large data sets. And it's also statistics is more uh, theory based and uh, data science is more pragmatic and practice based. But that's an overgeneralization, but that's more or less the gist of it. And the tools I used, so I used mainly uh, Jupyter, which was also created for this, uh, which also created this presentation. Um, it's like a notebook environment for where you can have text and code together. And then you have PostGIS, uh, then I use PostGIS, which is like the spatial database for Post, uh, spatial uh, extension for PostgreSQL. SQL. Um, and finally, I use GDOF for the conversions. And all of this was made with Python. So um, just a quick rundown. So in data science, you mo mostly work with NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib for data science projects. Um, Chapley and GeoPandas are wonderful libraries for uh, geospatial analysis and working with geospatial data. And PySAL is a pretty good library for spatial analysis, like spatial regression and so on. And the last one is a data shader. It's like a visualiza visualization uh, library for large-scale data. So let's have a look at the OpenStreetMap Wikidata items, uh, the OpenStreetMap elements with Wikidata. 
So this is the whole map of Europe with all the OpenStreetMap items with a uh, label of Wikidata. Uh, and I wanted to do, I d uh, as we saw uh, yesterday, I, I didn't want to use a heat map, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I used the chloropleth. It doesn't look much better. <laughs> it, it's not much better. It, you, you cannot really see uh, interesting patterns here, but uh, if we do like a, a hotspot analysis with a, a method called LISA, um, you can see hotspots of areas which are uh, where you have more um, OpenStreetMap items with Wikidata tag, yeah, like hotspots, cold spots, and so on. Um, in Wikidata, you one of the most common properties is the uh, is the instance of. It's like a class, so something is a class of. Um, here's a quick visualization of all the open uh, all the Wikidata items um, with the location associated to them. And from them, I, I took like uh, the most common instance of. So you can see that there are some interesting uh, regional differences. So for example, in, in France, you most commonly have a uh, church building that mostly reflects only the, the, the way people uh, insert data or the data sets they used or uh, what's interesting for different people that used it. And also you can see differences like um, in Britain, you have the, uh, what is it called? Building, yes. and. Uh, in another area, you have uh, where was it? House, yes. And here on, around the Alps are a lot of mountains, so that's too. Um, and the interesting thing is, when you have this instance off, you can drill down inside this data, so you can use, you can um, filter the data, so you have only companies in Wikidata. And th then you can visualize, okay, which companies do we have here? Um, and then you can see, okay, Germany and Austria has a Gasthaus, which is basically a restaurant. And then you have a brewery, and in England you have a lot of pubs. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> um, and also interestingly, uh, when, I, when you select Britain itself, you will see that the upper part of Scotland is known for whiskey distilleries. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I'm not sure if there's a bias or... <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting, you can see these interesting uh, relationships in the data. Um, what I wanted to see is uh, when you look at these businesses, each of many of them have a website associated to them. And I recently saw a tweet where uh, some guy on the internet said that apparently 70% of all websites run jQuery and a lot of web developers hate jQuery. And I wanted to see, okay, is this the right what he says? And I have the data and I can prove it and see if it's uh, how it looks regionally. So he was right, the median is around uh, 0 0.69. And this is the distribution of uh, regions uh, with jQuery uh, usage, so in percentage. So we have some regions that have 0.3% jQuery, they probably use React. And then you have like people that still use jQuery a lot. And when you visualize that originally, uh, one, one big disclaimer is that uh, a lot of the dark parts here are also because there's a missing data and a lot of not enough data to like see a proper pattern. But it's more like too fun to see what it, what it looks like. And again, a hotspot analysis. So um, in parts of France, they, they still like to use jQuery and and Sweden apparently doesn't like it at all. <laughs> Sorry. It's, uh, there's a bias in the data, so don't, don't believe the data like that. <laughs> we, we'll come to the points shortly if we have enough time. Yeah. Um, okay. Another project I did was uh, when, when with OpenStreetMap, I used uh, regions there and I c counted the various amenities in the region. So, um, for example, like restaurants, uh, bars, and things like that. And according to the counts in these regions, I, I looked at um, the signatures of a region and then used this signature of the region to classify countries. Um, <laughs> 
So here I classified um, a logistic regression to compare uh, Aus uh, Germany and France. And uh, again, I want to say that the data is biased. <laughs> I didn't prove it or, or checked it properly, but it was just an attempt to, to see if that works and, and how, it works, uh, how it looks like. Um, there have been a lot of regional differences in the amount, and, and since Europe is pretty big, you have very uh, big variations between the countries as well in the coverage of the data. So um, that's one part. And uh, another project that uh, Stefan Keller from Switzerland uh, showed me was the uh, castle dossier map of uh, Switzerland. And it's like a thematic uh, map where you have uh, data from OpenStreetMap, Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons, where you have the images from, and Wikipedia for uh, additional uh, information and labels. And uh, you can like see your region and see where you have a castle nearby and, and you can see a little bit about the story and that was a quite interesting um, project as well that combined both data sets. And in conclusion, uh, so naming things is hard and meaningfully categorizing things is even harder. Um, so this is especially what we see in Wikidata. You can see these regional differences where um, like one region has this class a lot, they use it a lot. It, it has been established in this country and in another country they use something completely different like building and the other one is, was house. Even though it's the same thing, but it's, it's quite difficult. But what I like about Wikidata is that they, they try to build the whole thing bottom up. So they just see how it develops and, and we will see if the, projects, uh, if the project will be good in this, in this sense. Um, yeah, that's what I said before. Uh, as a s also, a disclaimer, this hypothesis has not been tested. Um, there have been no p-values used for this hypothesis. Um, another thing which I, I see interesting, um, I, I saw it especially in an open stream map, is this uh, idea of the Wittgenstein, Wittgenstein's ruler. So when you use a ruler to measure the table, you also use the table to measure the ruler. So basically, if you have biased data, it can tell you exactly as much about the people that uh, created the data and, and work behind the data as much as it can tell about the region itself. So that's something I, I, I re you can see in Wikidata and OpenStreetMail a lot, like where the focus of the communities are and which projects are, are working. For example, in Wikidata, you have a lot of projects that um, they have wiki projects where they um, assemble people to work on on a certain region or a certain project or Nobel Prize uh, or something like that, and they collect data for that project. And the last part is uh, no die data. So really important when you do classifications and things like that and, and data analysis, you really need to know where your data comes from and, and, and if it's complete. That's also an, another big project, but we don't have time for that. I left some... Um, information for that at the end. Uh, yes, this is the information about the completeness. Oh, we actually do have some time left. Okay. Um, yeah, in OpenStreetMap you have a lot of research uh, consist uh, about the data completeness. So one research which was interesting is that the world user-generated roadmap is more than 80% complete according to this paper. Um, and also there are a lot of other projects that measure uh, different, that use different measures to see how complete the data set is, how complete certain attributes are. And in Wikidata that's been also recently worked on. So there's an a interesting, uh, interesting article that uh, talked about how to estimate the completeness of classes in Wikidata. So they basically used the, the time when somebody did an edit and the time it got edited again and use this as a, as a way to measure how um, complete a class is. And so they saw that some administrative regions are fairly complete and then something like mountains or hills are not so much complete because you can still see a lot of change going on there. And also there's another uh, paper that's generally for knowledge bases uh, like Wikidata where they assess the uh, completeness of the entities. And this is also interesting tool where you can see the completeness for various attributes. Yeah, so we made it. <laughs> so any questions?
Oh, just just ask his own. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I love that part of the presentation, but did I miss something? Or what was the link between the jQuery per country and Wikidata? Or is it is it coming from the same source? Or because I suppose the jQuery data doesn't come from there. Uh, so the question was about the uh, jQuery data, where it comes from, right? Um, so basically, I used uh, the company's data, which you saw before, for uh, OpenStreetMap, uh, for Wikidata. Um, let me check where it was. Yeah, so, um, no, this was not this. Yeah, here, I, I used this map for, um, I collected all the, all the businesses in Wikidata that have a location associated with them and that have a website with them. It was a, I think there was like 100,000 or something like that. Um, yeah. I, I, I thought I, I'll not make the time because when I tested it yesterday, uh, it was like 30 minutes, so <laughs> yeah. Okay, another question? Yeah? Uh, so the question was if the if the Wikidata art, uh, Wikipedia article is related to the Wikidata item. Um, yes, some of the information is loaded into the info boxes, but the text is not modified by the uh, information unless it's uh, in a language that's not um, updated. Then it's using the Wikidata information to generate the text, as far as I understood. Um, also, the coordinates are manually inserted, or uh, if the Wikipedia article had the information before. Uh, it was loaded into the Wikidata item from the Wikipedia page. Yeah. Yeah? When I understood correctly, all the data is stored for queries, so all the map data is provided by any stored for queries. Did you, did you publish them somewhere? Uh, yeah, well, uh, if I clean the notebooks, I, I will uh, publish the notebooks for that, yeah. Uh, so the question was if t uh, the data is available somewhere and the queries. Yes? The conclusion that the data that you have is extremely skewed and localized? Uh, as I said, uh, yeah, the question was if the uh, data is extremely skewed or localized. Uh, so yeah, as I said, there's a, um, I did not test if, if this is the case. So you could probably test it fairly quickly if there's a, if there's a regional homogeneity or uh, like a inter uh, in a con between countries, there's large differences. I think that's easy to test, um, but I haven't tested for that. Oh yeah, yeah. You could uh, check on, on on a larger scale too. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the question was how to access the OpenStreetMap data. Um, so I used also the Overpass API, but I also used the dumps for the, the whole uh, Europe data set. It's too large for querying the Overpass API. I tried to chunk it and everything, but in the end it was easier to just download the whole thing. Um, another project I didn't mention is, is the OSMNX uh, project. It's a wonderful uh, project by Geoff Boeing um, where you can query OpenStreetMap data fairly easily and you can get it um, as a data frame, Pandas data frame. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, all right. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you.